And we're going to stay in Conference USA, but we're going to head to Thursday night. Another 8 p.m. Eastern time game on ESPNU. The Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. They make their way across I-20 to Ruston, Louisiana for the first time since 2018 to take on the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs. The Hilltoppers are a five and a half point road favorite at BetUS. Uh, the total currently sits at 59. Western Kentucky is eight and three against the spread in their last 11 on the road in Conference USA. And they are five and two against the spread in their last seven as a road favorite. Uh, Louisiana Tech, five and one against the spread in their last six as a home dog. So trends kind of kind of going against each other here. Kyle, we've got another massive difference in strength of schedule here. Western Kentucky is number 15, Louisiana Tech number 97. Uh, but when you look at just raw PPA margin, uh, we don't see much separation here, right? The, the Hilltoppers are number 68, uh, Louisiana Tech number 70. Uh, the disparity, I guess, is in how we get to those numbers. Louisiana Tech's better on defense. Uh, they're number 65 PPA allowed per drive. Western is number 52 PPA per drive on offense. Uh, Kyle, tell me how you're breaking this one down. Yeah, uh, La Tech won last week, but it felt to me more like it was UTEP lost than La Tech winning in that game. I mean, that was just such an ugly game. Uh, UTEP's been a great fade in general. UTEP was three for 18 on third down in that game. I know Gary was happy with the ugly game because it doesn't matter how ugly the game is as long as you win. And uh, Gary had La Tech, and that was a good play. I think um, La Tech, it's kind of hard to say. Uh, Jack Turner looked really bad last week. So is Turner better than Hank Bachmeyer? I don't know. I mean, either one of them are a very good option. Uh, Turner had a brutal 33.2 PFF passing grade last week. Two turnover-worthy plays. Uh, three passes batted down at the line of scrimmage. He's six foot five, so that's kind of surprising. Um, he has major fumbling problems this year. He has fumbled way too much. Um, I think LaTeX's offense, uh, Cumby is an offensive guy who wants to play quickly. So it would surprise me that they're playing so slow. I think he's kind of decided they just don't have enough weapons. They're not that good on offense that they probably don't want shootouts like he would have thought. Um, Western Kentucky has a lot of weaknesses as a team, but a couple massive strengths that other teams in this conference don't have. They have an excellent quarterback in Austin Reed. Uh, Corley is a really good wide receiver. Uh, he's a problem for everybody that they're going to play. Reed is also a really good quick decision maker, 2.39 seconds to throw on average. LaTeX has a decent pass rush, but I don't know that they'll be able to get to him quick enough in a game like this. And LaTeX pass defense, guys, it looks good by the numbers. But come on, let's look at this for a minute. FIU with Grace and James, SMU a decent passing attack, Northwestern State, North Texas, Nebraska, UTEP with a backup quarterback. So I'm not convinced that LaTeX pass defense is actually good. We're going to find out here because that's a very weak schedule of passing attacks. I think they'll be uh, tested in a big way here, pass defense-wise, and I suspect they'll probably fail that test. So, um, LaTeX probably runs the ball, takes the air out of it a little bit. Uh, LaTeX, Gary likes these kind of stats, I know. LaTeX, 76 penalty yards uh, per game so far this year, and Western Kentucky, 43. That 33-yard difference could come into play in something uh, like a small spread like this. So, I lean Western Kentucky, minus the points. I, have, I think they have some strengths that are probably too much for LaTeX here. I, I could I could see I love when you bring that stuff up. Uh, Parker, the thing that I love most about Western Kentucky is the fact that when they when they get down inside an opponent's 40 yard line, they get a first down. They take advantage of it. This team is number two in the country with five point four eight points per scoring opportunity. And Louisiana Tech's defense is number 87 at three point nine four allowed. Tell me what we should expect maybe uh, on Thursday night. Lethal, absolutely lethal. And Louisiana Tech's defense is comparatively worse uh, at allowing or at finishing drives than they are allowing drives. 73rd in echo rate, 77th in points per quality possession there, or points per, per echo. So huge disparity there. Western Kentucky twists the knife. That's that's a product of having an experienced quarterback like Austin Reed. One thing I saw a lot about that that actually kind of went into my handicap against MTSU there, but I knew I was going to get to it with this one, is Austin Reed had a, a bad game last week. Uh, he had four turnover-worthy plays. That's 7% uh, of his throws last week. And Louisiana Tech did drop some interceptions. That might be a red flag for me. But if you look at his average depth of target this season, the last three games, 6.4, 6.0, 6.3, against, um, against Middle Tennessee State last week, 9.3. So uh, almost a 50% increase uh, in his uh, depth of target. They clearly were just letting him throw the ball a bunch, trying to trying to work out some of those kinks after playing Ohio State two weeks ago and or Ohio State and, and Troy, two good defenses. They're saying, hey, let's open it up. Let's kind of see what you can do. So yeah, he threw 
some some turn worthy plays he was slinging around a little bit more so i'm not as worried about that you guys mentioned kind of the disparity between the numbers of louisiana tech's passing epa or passing defense and rushing defense they're 27th in epa per pass allowed but they're 111th in epa per rush allowed guys when we see a big split what do we think selection Teams are rushing 9.8 percentage points more than average against Louisiana Tech. Uh, that is a top 10 in the country, absolutely exploiting this. I'm very interested in this because Western Kentucky is fifth in rush rate over expected. They're rushing 13.8 percentage points less than the average team. Western Kentucky does not have a run game to write home about, right? So what we're going to have to bank on here and what I am going to bank on here with this handicap is that the equilibrium kind of the the gravity between the run game and the pass game has been completely thrown off teams are just rushing against louisiana tech because it's kind of super easy to do and that that pass number is super inflated western kentucky's high volume passing efficiency is going to take over here they're going to be able to finish drives super super well and their defense while it struggles on third and fourth downs that, that really drink uh, brings things down and and struggles against the run game is is way better on early downs than it is on late downs they're 25th so if they can get louisiana tech behind the sticks really mess things up. Uh, I think that gives them a long, long leash on that side of the ball as well. So riding with the Hilltoppers again, going to going to the old faithful, but I'm going to take the Hilltoppers to cover here. I, I like it. I like it. Let's lock this thing up. Parker, Western Kentucky, minus five and a half. Uh, it makes all the sense in the world, right? It is so difficult to bet on this Louisiana Tech team unless UTEP is on the other side. So, <laughs> so we will lock that one up. Uh, we will keep the pace and we will move on.